So here's my Dahlia storage system, which I'm so far very pleased with. And uh, it's about a month since I uh, put the first ones away, so it's about time now I checked on these. So I thought I would uh, show you what I do and what the tubers are looking like uh, at the moment. So um, if you saw the last uh, video about, uh, about the system of how I store the tubers uh, between two layers of uh, plastic uh, with a, a newspaper, a damp newspaper laid over the top uh, and there's no filler material at all so it's quick and easy to look at the tubers to make sure they're okay. So uh, I'll show you that today. Um, I've got a, a monitor alongside them here which measures the temperature and the humidity. As you know temperature mustn't fall below um, zero because if your tubers freeze then they're dead. So I've got a minimum maximum uh, thermometer and the current temperature out here in the, it's a sort of storeroom out, out we've got here which has got no heating. Uh, the current temperature is 4.8. It got down to minus six or seven uh, last, uh, over the last few nights here in the UK. And uh, I'm just making sure that I don't need to add any heat into this room, but I don't think I do. Uh, and the humidity is between 70 and 80 so that's perfect although that's the humidity in the room uh, the humidity uh, inside the uh, tuber uh, boxes will be different because there's some damp newspaper in there but we'll have a look at that as we go along now so all I'm going to do is to uh, put the first row of boxes uh, onto the floor and then look at them each one separately on the table. So the whole job, there's 180 um, uh, tuber clumps stored here and, um, and overall uh, the job should take only about five, maybe maximum ten minutes to look at them all. Okay, so this is the first lot. These are Brookfield Snowball. There's six tuber clumps in here. And as you can see, they're just laid inside on top of this uh, plastic, which is um, uh, a fertilizer uh, bag turned inside out. Uh, and they're just laid on top. And I can see straight away that there's no um, change in color of any of the tubers. I'm just giving it a sniff and there's no uh, smell there suggesting rot and just a visual on the tubers and they're not rotting. This is a newspaper which I find is a good way to check that there's the right level of humidity there in the box is that the newspaper should feel damp, shouldn't feel wet and it shouldn't feel crispy and dry. If it were to be too dry then I'd simply spray the top with plain water a bit more than that usually if the newspaper is actually drying out then I'll make sure that it's uh, it's damp but not wet and that box is done. The next one this is Stella, I beg your pardon it's Sheila and then there's just, and there's just three in here one, two, three. Again, a visual that can reassure straight away that everything's okay in there. The newspaper is just beginning to feel a little bit dry. So I'll just, I'll just give that a bit of a spray. And that's Sheila done. This is Aretti Bliss. There's 11 in here. Nice damp newspaper. It's the visual of all of those and they're looking great. There's a 
few issues in these tubers because uh, during this time between now and when they're planted um, in spring I'll be dividing all of these either into single tubers or else into tuber uh, twos and threes. Uh, I've got some which I've already done a little bit later so I can show you those but as you can see the, there's a really full clump there there's something like I don't know 20 or more uh, tubers there in that clump uh, so um, so they'll certainly need dividing before they're planted out if you did leave that in the ground and it uh, um, it was to sprout for next year then that's okay except the plant will eventually after two or three years will become uh, they'll become um, so many tubers that, that really the, the ground that they're in will be unable to support that plant uh, and therefore dividing uh, daily is actually a good thing um, uh, for the sake of the plant. You get more plants of course and each of the plants will be in a more healthy condition because it has its own um, uh, soil uh, rather than competing. I'm just giving that one a look because it's looking a little bit dark. So I'm squeezing the tubers to make sure they're not going soft. Just give them a little smell. So there's a little bit of suspicion about that particular tuber. It's a little bit darker. And I'll be keeping a close eye on that. If I do find something that I think needs note, then, uh, news, news, then I'll make a note on the outside of the, uh, of the box smelly tuber or, or watch this one or something like that. Okay. Instant, everything's fine. Dump the newspaper. You can see if you, if you did have these stored in a medium, for instance, vermiculite or uh, uh, vermiculite or sawdust or shavings then you can see it's much more difficult to actually see the tubers and make sure that, that they're okay. Uh, with this system it's an it's instant. Those tubers are fine. Right, there they go. So what I can do here now is shift them from box to box. This is already bliss. Now I've already divided these into twos and threes. I did this the other day. So um, so they're ready to go in the ground now next spring. Um, but the tuber clumps will need to be split in some way. That gives rise to some difficulty. So um, I've got one which I'll show you later which is going to be difficult to split and I thought I'd do that on video. We'll walk through that and see what the challenges are and how, how I actually go about to splitting a, a difficult tuber. There's only two in here, Clearview Audrey. Only two survived so again I'll decide what to do in the way of splitting those when the time comes but I should get probably maybe four plants maybe even five plants out of that next year a heavier one this is preference there's five very big tuber clumps in there too difficult to divide those because they're flattened and you can imagine going through the middle to split them out and then maybe quarter them so that we'd end up with two or three tubers in each clump. Now then we've actually got an issue here because that um, little was it mother tuber is rotten. but it seems to be just that tuber so we caught that in time. You can see how if that were stored in um, 
a, a medium or, uh, or other then it would have been so much more difficult to actually spot that before perhaps this uh, the uh, the rot may have spread into other into other uh, tubers so I'm glad we caught that there is actually a smell to this box as well so because I've found that I'll just carefully inspect the undersides of of each of these tuber clumps and try to be gentle because it's so easy to break the necks and that would waste that particular tuber so all these are fine actually well that's fine and that's fine so there's just that one which I could smell before we got there there's a place if there is um, a tuber that's going through that sort of process there's a place for leaving the plastic off and just letting them breathe for a while until you know that the rot has not spread elsewhere uh, so, so what I'll do now is just write on the outside of the box uh, that there's some rot down aside for now so that I can put it at the top so I can get it easily when the time comes in maybe a week to have another look uh, at those tubers this one is Chasudi Hercules learned the lesson of the last one that was rotten I'll just remove that little bit there which little bit which looks suspicious again there is to make a point of looking at the undersides Well, this is one where I did actually put some uh, shavings down. This is the first one I did, I think, on video to say that shavings can be used. The normal way would be to put a layer of shavings, put the uh, tubers uh, down without touching, is the standard thing to do. These are, I am. Um, and then another layer of um, shavings uh, which cover completely the first uh, lot of tubers, and then put the next uh, layer of tubers onto that so that. Um, each each tuber layer has its own uh, uh, protective layer of sawdust or vermiculite or whatever. See how much more difficult it is to actually look at these. It's almost impossible to get a good look at the underside of those tubers because they're stored in uh, 
because they're stored in uh, shavings and it's more trauma as well for them for me to have to clear the shavings out so I can get a look. So I'm glad I didn't use shavings on the rest. They seem okay. That part there is the mother tuber, which is um, um, it's not not really rotting. I hope it's drying out rather than rotting. But you can see that it's um, there are some issues with it. It'll actually smell as well. Thinking the best thing to do with that would be to take it out. to the area where there's some rot starting then uh, there's so much less chance of the of the rot taking hold and spreading to other tubers so that's what I've done there I've laid it open So I'm thinking as I go along here what I could do is to store them so that the underneath is visible because that seems to be where the trouble, that's where the rot tends to be occurring. So tightly packed that it's difficult to get them back in now. Okay. Another one to take a close look at. Very localized areas of rot um, we've found today, and I, th I think we, well, we've got good control of it because a we know it's there, um, and b we can get at it easily and sort it out if if the rot were to be spreading. I'm going to get on and do the last row now uh, off camera and then uh, we'll finish by having a little uh, chat about the whole system and, um, and how it's working out. So I've checked all the tubers, I didn't found, find any more uh, rotting. But I did want to show you these because this is what I would call difficult tuber clumps for splitting. These are down and royal and uh, I'm going to split them but as you can see they're so tightly packed and the uh, tubers themselves are actually quite small so that in order to find the point of cleavage in there will be a bit of a challenge and I'm going to do that uh, on video. Another challenge that you often get particularly if you don't uh, divide your clumps until uh, next spring 
is that the um, stem areas have dried out and uh, and basically become uh, almost woody so that um, it's difficult to actually uh, use an implement such as a knife to cut through the knife simply won't uh, won't cut through so I've taken to using a little power saw under those circumstances so anyway I'll do that on the next video and we'll divide these off into uh, uh, probably twos and threes So I think during making this video we've actually I'm going to change the way I do things because we found some uh, uh, rotting tubers I'm actually going to store these in future upside down so that the area which is in greatest risk of uh, rotting which is be, uh, beneath uh, you know below the lower surface of the clump uh, is visible uh, straight away so um, I've got three boxes here which each had a, a single rotting tuber in so I'm going to keep those close by on the top here and check them out next week that'll be easier because they're upside down and I'll be able to see straight away where the areas of rot were so easier to see. I've left the stalk on that. too crowded really this box so I think I'll put it either separate them into two boxes perhaps or else have it on top so that it can't so that the uh, there's no pressure on them this is the last one which I'll now turn upside down learning process of course and uh, uh, the way that you store your tubers if you found it works for you then certainly uh, keep at it but we do hear so many stories of uh, having a look at your uh, tubers next spring and whole, whole boxes of them have rotted such a shame Another one that's a bit too crowded. Okay, so I hope you found that useful and uh, good luck with your uh, dahlia growing and uh, stay safe. Hope to see you for uh, the next video. Bye now.